and welcome to Chatter Cove, where we discuss everything from movies to TV to video games to whatever the fuck we can think of. I'm your host, Dragon King Thomas Hughes, and as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, Lickler, aka Hayden Roberts. Can we not just not do this one, please? <laughs> Drop it your revenge again. Even that had fucking Michael Caine. This one's just, I can't, it broke me watching it. It broke well, me. Well, today we're discussing Scooby Doo, The Curse of the Lake Monster, released in 2010. And serving as a sequel to the prequel of the year prior. Uh, mm. Once again, the movie is directed by Brian Levant. Similar to how the two director cinema entries were directed by the same guy. The movie also sees the return of the main cast from the first movie. During them this time, you have some new faces like Ted McGinley, who was in Wayne's World 2 and in Mocker Bay's Pearl Harbor. You also have Michelle Nichols, who may only had a brief cameo in one scene. She's famous for playing the original Uhura in the William Shatner era Star Trek movies. And since I'm not name dropping everyone here, the uh, last one I'll name drop is Marion Ross, who actually voiced the character in one episode of Mystery Incorporated, as well as voicing the more famous Grandma Square Pants. This movie sees the gang go to work for Daphne's uncle to help pay off a debt, but while they're there, they're drawn to the mystery of the Lake Monster. So. Uh. Totally not obvious from the start. Yep. So it's, literally, it's, you know. I, I've never watched this film before, and as soon as the start of it, I was like, oh, "That's totally not Enter Bank name here." Wait, you never watched this film before? No. Yeah. This is your first time watching it. I watched it. Yes. And straight away, I guessed who the like the. Right, you just not guess the fact that that said person is not present. Yeah, literally, I was like. Okay, they're, they're, they're Shaggy, they're Scooby, they're uh, <laughs> We'll get into that later. He's spent the entire time. Spoiler alert. Jones. Damn it. Bastard. <laughs> bastard. Anyway, <laughs> let's go straight into the intro. So, the movie starts with the gang chasing the bad guy through a house. I like this scene because it's shot quite unique since they shot it from outside. Yeah. They showed the very cartoony shadows running past the windows. And compared to the other movies, obviously it's massively different sort of beginning since this actually starts with them catching the villain mm-hmm. and unmasking off screen obviously because you know spoilers yeah don't give it away well, straight away since you know it's it's a, one person who's not flash there. of the future and obviously after this obviously it goes straight to mm-hmm. one week earlier but it's, for a start it gets it's a bit disorientating at the start but and that kind of like i said it kind of ruins what we know because like if you at least got half a brain you can realize wait a minute they're not there they're all shocked by the reveal it's got to be this person yeah but if you haven't got half a brain or you're a child you might not notice hmm. who even has children these days uh people mm. who want their kids to watch scooby-doo because we're currently growing up and watching scooby-doo and we're sad bastards <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah so I give them props for trying obviously a bit different because you think about the first film started with them chasing that uh, ghost around trying to get Daphne mm. the second one uh, began with go on help me out yeah. you seen that movie um, the pterodactyl flying through and they're all like we're, we're all famous look at us on the red carpet we're yeah that was it uh, yeah, uh, I smell weed <laughs> The last one started with, well, it's just the, Summit. It was the bus, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, I've already forgot that movie. Um, maybe it did it like a week ago, but I've already forgot. Um, <laughs> goes from this, basically the sort of the ending when they reveal whether who who is the bad guy, and then cuts to the flashback to a high school musical to. Um, school's out kind of <laughs> waiting for it with um, Scooby twerking in a hula dance yeah uh, that was the moment that I started to break well one thing I will say we got good from the uh, intro is we got the always bulging out Scooby joke which I use for the thumbnail mm-hmm. less work for me to do there you go that'll do it work for your thumbnail <laughs> <laughs> exactly but then obviously then you had the one week earlier, which is the saying, which obviously say starts with the weird school set. Yeah, literally, literally high school. Literally high school, school. But obviously, it starts with Shaggy just, you know, not even bothering with his test, which, you know, he should actually do that because, you know, he's quite oh, yeah. dumb. 
but obviously the clock trolls him at one point with the fact that it slows down, and he's like, what? He's like, no, 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 no. no. Like, no reverse time, it reverses like, no! And no, he's just going mental. I tell him, he's got to stop eating those edibles. Seriously. Uh, so as soon as the uh, bell rings, and everyone runs outside, and you, uh, yeah. you see um, <laughs> a very shoddy hula dancing Scooby. I tell you, he's twerking. Don't get me wrong, it's it's funny to watch him hula <laughs> and not have anyone question why there's a dog. And then but, it you know. cuts to them not actually hula dancing. It's just well, 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 you have Shaggy to... join first, banging well, the drum. Okay. And then obviously it cuts to they're just hallucinating it. But what we'll say is the oh. fact that they have at least improved the CGI just ever so slightly. I know there's like a year difference between the movies and they're mm. more than likely shot them back to back, but you know. Could have done yeah. better than this. I'm kind of glad that they minimised his role in this movie. Yeah, I think they realised from the second, first one, it's like, yeah, he actually looks really bad, but then also still keeping bad. Yeah. God's sake. Just think they're good for yeah. Tom. It's at least still voiced by Frank Welker. And then Velma obviously is like, what are you two doing? And you can see Shaggy and Velma, they've at least got the classic costume for them, and then the less said about Fred the better. What you mean, uh, smoochy smoochy? Because what I'm gonna get to in a minute is after obviously <laughs> she alerts him to you're clearly hallucinating. Mm. Shaggy somehow still ends up with uh, sand in his shoes. Apparently, uh, Scooby's now by this point started a camera scrapbooking hobby because gardening mm. wasn't his thing because he kept digging it all up. Uh, but yeah, obviously, okay. you know, the camera pans and you get the uh, classic look of the van, since they've never actually painted the van to look yeah, exactly the, like the, the classic cartoon. Like... Uh, and obviously then, this sort of makes a lot of sense, <laughs> mm-hmm. since the first one you had the shoddy van, so it makes sense for them now to give it a paint job. Yeah, and then obviously when it opens, you have a certain uh, smoochy, smoochy, smoochy session going on. And even Daphne still looks like the character, and then you've got Fred. Hey, I just got a blue t-shirt on. I'm cool. Literally nothing like Fred. He was just... Well, the blue t-shirt was in the old, really old ones. Yeah, but they've got all of them to wear a similar costume. I mean, even like, like Daphne's got the green fucking headband. They've all got some that uh, just like the costumes. And then the, Fred. The bl- yeah, it's the blue shirt, because in the, direct- the first entries in the director uh, DVD movies, uh, he wore blue. That was his colour. He wore like a blue shirt. And then obviously they were, when they finally went away from the more scary, scary ones to the more basic ones, he then went back to the classic white thread. As- Ascot. <laughs> yeah. Since obviously the old what, uh, director video were meant, slash DVD were meant to be the completely different to the show. That's why they had him dressed differently and had the entire gang dressed differently. Oh. Which is obviously why they did the joke in the Cyber Chase movie where they meet the actual gang who are dressed more classic when they're obviously not. And they're like, oh, cool Ascot. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, the blue shirt's probably the only thing he's got going for him. Classic Fred, apart from the one scene later on, which we will get oh, yeah, to that, later on. That scene is genius, but we'll get to that the later only on. really bit of genius in this entire film. Because, you know, we're still in uh... the uh, early stage of this movie. And obviously, Scooby managed to snap a pic of these two in this very uh, shocking moment. Yeah. And then, yeah. They're, they're about to go further. Yep. Uh, so, obviously, during this, obviously, it's before this, it's revealed that they have summer jobs to pay off a debt. Because Shaggy burnt down a barn. Yeah. And obviously, when the two of them are smooching, they reveal when their romance started, which is the exact same time. Which is obviously when yeah. they're uh, chasing down a, a spooky scarecrow. Which I'm happy they show the flashback. They could have just said, "Oh yeah, yeah we, we did this," but no, they actually did film a flashback sequence of them eventually burned down the barn, and you know Fred mm. catching Daphne's arms, and them going, "Yeah, we're good at fuck." It's like we'll, we'll repeat that over and over again. Mhm. Mhm. So, so following the... this, they drive up then. Yeah, in the, in the really cringy Indiana Jones style map. Which they play Punch Buggy. 
Dinsky. Mm. No, it's Punch Buggy. Why is it first and he punches Shaggy? Uh, Scooby mm. punches Shaggy first and he punches him back. And then they just keep brawling. Yep. Or, scr- or you can hear him shouting Punch name, Buggy. Like- before that, that, and they go, like, we, we, we're both re- really imma- like, mature. Punch Buggy that. White. That was a joke. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Humor. In some scenes, Scooby looks acceptable, then other scenes like this, you're just like, what the fuck? I don't know, I just like, I just like, purposely like, block him out. There's like the occasional scene in the movie when you're like, oh, you see, Joe isn't too bad in this situation. And then you look at this series in the back and you're like, who, who wrote off on this movie? <laughs> I mean, yeah, like I said, I just block him out the entire film. It's me. It's just, it's, it's, it's just a, a, a group of kids that's mystery solving with Mind's a dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like right at the end, they go, I would have got away with two people meddling kids and that totally not a dog that's right there. Like, <laughs> there's no dog there. So, not there. Obviously, when they finally arrive at the country club, you meet Daphne's uncle, and he's a weird okay. thing where he he's takes Shaggy's hand. There's an awkward fist bump with Fred for going back to handshake with Velma, and then Scooby just bursts out and just mm. shakes his hand massively, and he's like... <laughs> he definitely does not try to touch up Daphne. Yeah. At all. Not like that old woman later on. Oh, God. <laughs> Which is her at Star Trek. That's, that's the one I was on about. Oh, uh, yeah. She's the one at the OG Star Trek... Uh, era uh but anyway um so after this you have the uh start of a romance that never really gets off the ground it does slightly and then falls back to the ground instantly which is the velma and Cheggy romance hang on which... a minute well no. wasn't that a woman like before yeah you mean the uh not really important scene when they go to the uh yeah, the crazy old woman wickles yeah, when they go to the uh, the shop and they just tell yeah. them to watch out for light months and then that's it. You're setting up the clock. Yeah. Well, all she's literally there is just the scene later on when they go back. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, That's why I ignored it. It's not a massively important scene. <laughs> well, I wrote it down because it reminds me of old man Wickles. So I said crazy old woman Wickles. I just wanted to do that joke. Carry on. Okay, uh, so... Uh... And so, yeah, the Velma and Shaggy romance start to very rapidly blossom with uh, Shaggy oh, yeah, falling that... in Velma's arms. And, um, uh, that weird cringy moment of him like, getting really lovey-dovey. And eventually yeah, it gets Shaggy to really reality. When, uh, she's like, <laughs> it's just... You have eight, dunk. Yeah, he's literally like Shaggy not realising Velma's gay, pretty much. Entire film. It's obvious. It's fuck. <laughs> Well, it's not really. It's not really. Pushed, you... It's not really pushed out massively in this film. No, but it's still obviously. Well, that's, think... that's just because you what? read on the stuff recently. It's not actually pushed yeah. out in this. She's meant. Oh, that's and it's Hayley Cook. It's Hayley Cook. Yeah, yeah but that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, just because the actress is gay it doesn't mean the character's meant to be. I'm pretty certain this version of the character is meant to be straight, unlike the James Gunn version, which was meant to be gay, but obviously the studio just made it straight because kids film early 2000s, they'd already put enough dark material into that. That was more grown up than uh, I think the studio would have wanted. <laughs> Plus it's a Cartoon Network movie. So I don't think they're massively going to push that back then. Now they might, but mm. back then, no chance. Uh, but anyway. Um, In so, my uh, mind, it works. That's your <laughs> mind. you got a weird mind, that's why. Uh, <laughs> so... I think this is a nice call back to Mystery Incorporated, which came out the exact same year as this. Since yeah. in that, at, for so many episodes, obviously Shaggy and Velma were actually a couple. Obviously until the Scooby uh, got in between them and they're like, oh, fuck this. Uh, but yeah, it's nice for them to use that, that story here. Is it more than just a friend and Daphne one to go bow chicka wow wow chicka chicka wow wow? <laughs> and obviously after this, uh, you have... The scene where Scooby mocks Shaggy, where mm. obviously Shaggy tells Scooby his feelings towards Velma, and he just falls on the floor and laughs at him. Because he goes, "Do you think it should not, not be back?" And he's like, "No." Nope. And then obviously Shaggy's like, "Oh, come uh, come cry to me when it's flea season." <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so then, following his daughter, he then talks with Mr. Frederick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're actually working there, and obviously... In a totally not High School Musical 2 scene, again. Yeah. The golf caddy. He's literally just straight from the fucking film. And obviously, uh, Fred reveals in this dialogue that he and Daphne aren't actually boyfriend and girlfriend, but they're like... Uh, to Daphne and sort of, <laughs> like, Together, but not that sort of together. And obviously, as you say, cuts down to Daphne and Velma, where Daphne's like, oh, yeah. We're, we're totally boyfriend and girlfriend. And now she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're getting two mixed dialogues here. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then obviously... Obvious, Fred's being Fred. Exactly. And then obviously after this conversation, it puts to Scooby doing fuck all, just relaxing by the uh, the pool. Because he's a it dog. Why would work. you put a dog to work? <laughs> and I was following that, uh, you have Fred and Daphne go, oh yeah, let's go uh, relax in the pool. And they're like, okay. And Shaggy's like, oh, do you want to go? And Velma's like, oh, no, I'm actually going to take a walk. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll come with you. Yeah. <laughs> and I see. Flora and Fauna. Wow, is this really ever heard those two words together? <laughs> oh, gosh. So you get this uh, very badly uh, seducing moments when he's walking down the beach and he's talking oh, to yeah. her. And she gets so far ahead of him that Scooby's next to him playing the violin. <laughs> and uh, he just turns around and smashes the violin, which annoys Scooby for a few moments before he uses the bow. That's a, a violin stick for people who don't I know. know. Uh, well, I know you know, but you know some people might not know. Uh, he also oh. uses said bow, violin stick, to scratch his back, which he very much likes. Mm. There you go. I've saved you googling it, people. You're welcome. <laughs> well done, you. Uh, explained the most basic thing. Exactly. Even though I forgot what the word was, I had to google it myself. Oh my god! Of course you did. Because I couldn't remember. I, was like, I swear it's got an official uh, term, but what the fuck is the official term? I don't really want to just put a violin stick. But I typed that into <laughs> Google and I got the word bow. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so again, obviously, even though it's obviously some really dodgy CGI, it's still sort of a classic Scooby moment as you're trying to troll Shaggy behind with the fucking musical notes flying around and everything. So, you know, I can let that slide a bit because it's quite funny. Uh, and obviously Velma finds that strange looking gem which is obviously turned out to be a moonstone, moonstone. is it? Yes, yeah, the word. Uh, on the beach which obviously Shaggy says is as pretty as her eyes which causes her to almost puke and he's like wait, wait, what, what, what? Uh, obviously it's because the statement because obviously she's something happening. Yeah. Which I won't say if it's too spoilery at the moment. Shaggy said that and it's like what? Well. Uh, anyway, obviously she eventually <laughs> says, oh, I'm going to go and lie down. And uh, Shaggy's like, oh, okay. And she goes off and he says something to Scooby. And Scooby eventually smashes himself over the head with a very cartoonish hammer. Yep. But, so, again, what? another sort of classic sort of Scooby moment that he did something like that. Especially when he's got the little Scoobies with wings running around his mm. head. I do like when Scooby's cartoonish, is what I'll say. When other yes. people act like it, it yeah, hurts it's kind of physically. They did cringy, that's why. Whereas Scooby does it right because he's actually Scooby in a works. fucking cartoon. With the rest of them, it physically makes me want to bash my head against a wall. So we'll get to that bit when yeah. that happens. So anyway, um, so mm. the next scene is when they go to the party at the sort of beach area. Yeah. Where the gang's like, "Oh, where's Velma?" He's like, "Oh, she's sick." Oh, not because something I said <laughs> or thought yeah, yeah, yeah. I put into her head. It's, and it's like, they're like, not sick oh, of okay. Of and, and then uh, someone starts vaping. Yeah, and obviously that's when you get the Star Trek cameo with uh, him very, getting really weird. He's like, oh, it's like a picture of her. And he did that weird thing. He's like, oh, I keep my better side. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously eventually, the after Shaggy eating his uh, spaghetti, um, spaghetti, the lights go out and the light and monster appears. On. Which obviously is a very CGI late monster again, but oh it's actually God. good CGI compared to Scooby. I mean, as you say, so. Compared to Scooby, this is good CG. I'd rather I see mean, them all movie. Yeah, but look, uh, which I've put down is the only thing scary about the late monster was the CGI. I think to be honest. Nah, it's, 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 it doesn't look good to me. For a TV it's show, I think they did well compared to the Scooby one. Fucking yeah. put that budget into Scooby. It's better than Scooby, but yeah, it's, it's not. It's not the great CGI, wrong. but it's still better than that shoddy dog, which is meant to be the fucking star of this film. 
and this scene coming up is literally his last scene for quite some time. Mm. Uh, obviously, after the monster attacks, uh, eventually the guests leave. Also, Scooby dives into a punch bowl like he was Tom Daly. Mm. Uh, and then that's his, literally his last scene for a, a little while now. See, Joe Scooby. Here's the warning, guys. See, Joe Scooby is gone. We're okay for a bit. Uh, and this literally is where the mystery begins because they're like, okay, we can help you out. And he's like, oh, okay. So you've, you've hired the best mystery solvers in the tri state area. Why are they trying to be Dr. Jesus Doof? Why are they <laughs> trying to be Dr. Doof? They're just <laughs> state area. That's literally the um, first thing that came to my mind with him saying that. I was like, wow. Behold, my Lake Monsterinator! <laughs> They help me take over the Tri State area. <laughs> but anyway, so obviously their first uh, part of the mission is to go to the old lighthouse to speak to the inhabitant who is the only person ever to snap a picture of the monster. But when they arrive, he isn't there. He's a pedo. So Shaggy suggests them to split up so he can be with Velma and continue his awkward romantic dialogue. Which kills. So obviously the comments. He makes about, oh, I like walking into the moon. And she's like, oh, same. I like, uh, her comment is uh, walking by the light of the silvery moon, which tells yeah. him it's like a, an old like song that she enjoys. And then suddenly Shaggy remembers. And oh, you get this gosh. really out of place, very strange cut to a musical performance. This made me want to die. He sings a song to Velma with the help of Barbershop Quartet. And then and that is not even the worst of it. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a bit. Don't worry. I mean, this seems a bit weird and kind of throwed from the movie. But I'll give them props to try to do something different. But you know, it's should just doing something completely different. Uh, and obviously, all of a sudden, as you said, this scene then cuts to Scooby scratching a record as a DJ while Shaggy performs the exact same song in a more rock sense. And don't know why they did this. They could have just put to a more it, romantic version. But... I just couldn't deal with it. I just couldn't. Like, I was bashing my head against my laptop at that point. I just, I just needed to feel something other than that. I paused it just to write my notes from beforehand. I was like, fuck it, I'm not listening to this. I'll, re- I'll just type back. But yeah, this, this is the worst musical performance in the film. There's another one to come in a bit. Yeah. Which we'll get to there. But, um,. Anyway, so obviously after this weird moment, they, uh, you see, uh, obviously Fred and Daphne talking. Where obviously Fred reveals that he had a nice little chat with her, uh, uh, Shaggy because Daphne's like, oh, I think Shaggy's in love with Velma. He's like, oh, mm-hmm. I spoke to him earlier. I forgot him, Velma. She's like, wait, 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 wait. What did you say to him? And obviously they then get cut off by uh, Shaggy and Velma screaming because they just ran into a clearly fake. Even more than CGI because it's a guy oh, yeah, costume yeah. late monster. Uh, obviously, it, they run to them. Monster follows but falls over, and Fred reveals the monster is actually the guy they went to speak with. In fact, I will tell you this: is the guy from Ghost Shark, you know, the guy yeah. who lived in a lighthouse as well. Yeah, that was him. He's the guy living in the lighthouse. But, he yeah. lived in the lighthouse in two films. Yeah. I sat there and I was like, wait, invested. that guy looks like the same guy from that. And I Googled it. I was like, yes, it is the same guy from Ghost Shark. Uh, which we obviously we watched a couple of months ago out of podcast terms. Way right before podcast was even a thing for us. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so obviously the gang sit there with this guy and he reveals that he never actually saw said like monster. He was scamming people. Yeah, he was basically oh, scamming people. Kosha looked exactly like it. Even though it looks still very shoddy. Yeah, it looks shoddy, but it looks like a frog with teeth. Yeah, but I'm pretty certain if Again. you saw that ring around, you'd think it was, as a character in a uh, movie, you'd think it was fake. Yep. Whereas the CGI, which for us is fake, but for them it's like not even there, but in reality it's there for them, and then they'd be like, oh yeah, shit, there's monsters. Okay, I'm going way yeah. too into this. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, so obviously the only thing that comes out of this is one scene with this character is the backstory f- for the old woman in the cave. Yep. Which obviously reveals that there's a witch who created these monsters back in the day to scare off uh, the people that were, uh, 
What was they exactly? Like sort of like the pirate type character. That was his set list. The set list. Uh, obviously taken over and she's like, oh yeah, get rid of him. And obviously that that is literally it. And you know, back in the present, uh, yeah, Fred teaching her. Witch. That's important. Yep. Uh, later back... scene. You have uh, Fred and then teaching some girls how to play golf, which pisses off Daphne. Yeah. I hate Freddy's being Fred and flirting with girls. Because um, Fred's Fred. Yep. And dorky <laughs> chicks like you turn me on too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously uh, Shaggy then tries to talk to Fred and Daphne. But he quotes, a, uh, he's, he's like, oh, I've got a friend who calls Scruffy. No, wait, then, no, that's me. Uh... Yeah. He has that weird he's got a because he's got a goatee. Damn, that's too obvious. <laughs> he's got a dog. He hasn't got a dog. He's got a goatee. <laughs> <laughs> it's very <pretty> clearly <laughs> designs himself in their mind, and he's like trying to throw him off by saying, "Oh, his name's Scruffy." Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so obviously, uh, <laughs> this conversation gets thrown out the window because Belle must find some CCTV footage of the monster and its yeah. new uh, hooded friend. And obviously, they're like, yeah. "Oh, zoom in, zoom in." And at first, in the zoom in, you're like, oh, you really can't see anything. But then, so, oh, hold on, it's, uh, it's, it's focusing. Yeah, it's rendering. Oh no, tea everywhere. Yes, the thing's broke. It's definitely what a, not a winky dink. Exactly, <laughs> Palmer. Why would you do that? Oh, oh it's so like you're the bad no guy. Man. Oh no! <laughs> Shame. This is a quote-unquote accident. Oh no! <laughs> I've got a lot of these uh, jokes in here of the quote-unquote. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, so obviously this leads her to apologise and then say, "No, if you don't mean the gang, I'll leave." Uh, obviously, I'll gang follower. Not do bad stuff. Uh, Shaggy makes a quote to where she ends up wandering off, and uh, Daphne's like, "Oh, that was really nice of you, Shaggy." And obviously, then he reveals to Ben that he's madly in love with her, which of course is more confident between no, Daphne no, and ben, Fred. Really? <laughs> so obviously, that uh, Daphne and Fred now argue of what women would like. With obviously Daphne using this yeah. excuse to take jabs at Fred for obviously what was happening, because obviously he's he's like what chicks like is I don't remember the actual quote. I couldn't be asked to write it down, but uh, he has his own quote. Obviously, Daphne's like, "Oh, chicks love it when you're sensitive and stuff." But that, somewhere along that line. And obviously that leads to the argument. But you say stuff like, um, you know, he's something you're being sensitive and not flirting with other girls and <laughs> like an excuse for to take a jab at Fred constantly. Yeah. Right, right, massive very realised and he's like, What? Which is well obviously, it leads to leads to Shaggy obviously he's leaving the argument. And Okay, warning guys, CGI dog in bed. Uh, so following this, obviously Shaggy rejoins Scooby, who, apart from the weird musical number earlier on when he just popped up randomly for one bit, uh, obviously he's been missing for quite a bit. Uh, maybe fans complain too much about this awful CGI. Uh, and they're the most but who knows. Uh, anyway, his first scene actually. back involves him and Shaggy practicing, and obviously Shaggy asking Belma out on a date. It doesn't go well because obviously Scooby's like no. And he's like what? Scooby, come she on. Really thinks she's going out on a date as well. You yeah, she's joining. Which you don't know yet, hundred percent because obviously he hasn't got to that scene where he's dressing up yet. Just saying. Uh, obviously this leads to them going to the kitchen for a midnight snack where Scooby dresses a chef and makes a sandwich until Shaggy oh, smells well, yes. uh what he believes is Belma's scent and just you know a very cartoonish yeah. This is the moment where I was like, okay, the cartoon does not work for everyone else. Cause like, I didn't like, mind. It would have been funny if it was Scooby, like, getting yeah, distracted by something yeah, else. But... If it was Scooby, it would work. But with with Shaggy, it just doesn't work. It's too uncanny, va- uncanny valley. It just doesn't seem right. It but Shaggy wrong. does this in the cartoon every now and again, so I kind of let it slide and accepted it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not as pussy as you, so I'm saying it's cartoonish. It is wrong. cartoonish, but it's, I don't think it's that bad. Okay, the could just done it, so he just walked away, but I think it's kind of funny that he floats away. You like Reven- you got uh, George Revenge as a kid, but you're not trusted at all. Do you want me to cut you from this podcast? Do it, bitch. I have to do this fucking film. 
I would, but it means me speaking by myself, and I can't be asked to do that. Mm. But yeah, anyway, uh, apart from them dragging that scene straight from the cartoon, uh, this, this annoys Scooby, who starts stealing from his collar. So, following this, you have Fred jogging until he reaches a tennis court where Daphne's playing dub, uh, doubles with other men, which obviously she hugs the one when they win. Which uh, obviously, similar to the golf incident earlier, where obviously Daphne got pissed off over Fred. Uh, now Fred is slightly pissed off over Daphne. He's jealous, but and he's not he's, jealous. He's jealous. She leaves the court then to slightly rub it in his face, like it was nothing, while Shaggy on the other hand finally tracks down the smell, where he sees obviously the monster in the distance, which causes him to run and catch up with Daphne and Fred, who ask him what's wrong, and he gives the most sarcastic response that he could give. Which he's saying he was practicing his blood curling scream, which I think is funny. It's, sar- it's sarcasm. I love sarcasm. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is when the monster then jumps down. Fred stands tall in front, has a little uh, fall back at first, but then gets back up slightly. And while this is happening, Shaggy and Daphne hide behind him. Someone who's annoyed with him at the moment, and another man. Hiding behind him. <laughs> uh, and obviously, Fred then beats down the monster. Yeah. He's saying, Jeff, get his mask off, get his mask off. Right, it's then revealed that, just like the first film, this is actually real. And he's like, oh, okay, split off. They can't catch us all. Fred and Daphne run one way, Shaggy runs the other. The monster chases Shaggy, which he obviously is like, why are you chasing me? But Fresh obviously, meat, he then is saved by Scooby on a quad bike. But alas, they are both dumb idiots and drive straight into a sand trap. Alas, it reminds me of the of the first good film and... <sighs> I need to watch that again. Oh yeah, the quad bike in that as well. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good scene. This one anyway, was, uh, that was a good scene. Yeah, they end up finding a gemstone within the sand with shaggy pockets. Oh look, it's a moonstone. Totally and then back to... with... Um, Fred and Daphne, uh, you find them hiding with the golf carts where Fred eventually questions the guys Napoli was with. But before she could answer the question, they're attacked by the monster again, which Fred yeah. found off her golf club where uh, she makes the joke about some dates she was on before. He's like, wait, you went out with him? <laughs> I can't remember the guy's name. It's like, Harmy or Harney or something. Yeah, something like that, some stupid name. Hermie. Um, And Fred, obviously... Swinging his golf club, trying to back it off, ends up smacking it in the le- in the toe, which causes obviously it to jump in the air. Like, ow, 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 which is I found quite humorous. Um, You're very easily like humoured, aren't you? It's a, it's he's smacking a monster in the foot. It's monster meant to be this big scary thing, and he gets hit in the foot, and it's like jumping around like it's put on Lego. You're twenty two. No, it's still humorous. <laughs> I ain't gonna jab something that's quite funny to me. Oh, it's just funny to me how easily you find things funny. <laughs> that uh, means I've got a good sense of humour. <laughs> yeah, that's totally what it means. And I'm still childish. Okay, then... Who wants to grow up? Tom Hanks in big! <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, so they've managed to run off and... When obviously Shaggy joined them earlier on, you saw behind them clearly two very uh, standout outfits in a store, yeah, and the which classic. they used to disguise themselves. It, basically, they look exactly like the classic uh, Fred and Daphne, the ascot and everything, and the blonde Fred wig. Flying himself, hey, that looks good. <laughs> yep. Which, you know, since Fred is blonde, not dark-haired. Sorry, it still annoys me that it didn't make him blonde. Because you look at him with a blonde hair, he's like, oh, that's Fred. (laughs) Fuck these movies for not making him blonde. Anywho, um, so the next scene is obviously Velma when she's acting very mysterious. Obviously the gang rejoined together. Mm -hmm. Minus... Scooby, I don't think he's in this scene. It was just Fred, Daphne, and Shaggy, wasn't he? 
Yeah, I think so. Because he's disappeared again. Uh, and they find her on the beach asleep, with her hands mm-hmm. covered in warts, because that's very suspicious. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. It's totally not because she's coming a whip or anything like that. No. It's random. <laughs> hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So, the next bit is when they finally go back to the place and uh, Shaggy finally confesses his feelings to her, which yeah, and... is after, obviously, they come up with the next plan they're going to do. Uh, at first, obviously, she thinks he's joking and she's like, oh, you're joking? And he's like, oh, no one wants to hang out get a nerd and he walks away and she's like oh, 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 I mean uh, yeah sure why not sure why not what well, I'm funny with this is the joke where I was uh, where Jaggy turns around and he's like oh my friend Daphne wants some alone time and they're both like no 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 at all we're okay no no, no. Peace Peace no. She, she just let her be like, on her own please no they are in the best uh, place currently at their, of their romantic uh, entanglement and no, obviously, after she says yes, uh, Shaggy's delighted, does that weird thing where he falls over while trying to do the Irish uh, toe tap thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the next thing you see is the scene you mentioned earlier where yeah. Scooby thinks he's on the date as well, since this is his first scene back once again. Uh, and Shaggy's getting ready. Scooby's got a tie around his neck. And eventually. Jackie's like, oh, you're not coming with us. It's just me and da- uh, Velma. I say Daffy then. Um, <laughs> and he's like, oh. I'm being Daphne and Velma on a date. Perfect. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> double dating. Shaggy's going to be Daphne and Velma. <laughs> uh, Shaggy leaves. Skibby then gets a no- uh, so that has that weird like speak bubble imagination thought where he sees Velma and Shaggy together at Christmas with a new dog. With him stuck out in the cold, wearing a trench coat and hat while differing. He turned out like flashing people. <laughs> yeah. That's what he was doing. He's walking in the street, flashing people. And then he walks up that house, but flash him. Was like, wait, but that's, that's 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 Shaggy and Velma. I can't flash them. Oh, look on the dog. But obviously, this, um, this mental images causes him to finally fight back and want to destroy said date. And then the next scene is obviously the date. I think yeah, I think you had Daphne and Fred walking to a boat at first, which I'll we'll get to in a minute. But yeah, the, the date's a bit more uh, painful. In, in, info, watch. info before that bit. So, uh, oh, the Shaggy lights a match during the date, which scares Velma. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, which is hate. Totally fire. Not hint, hint, nudge, nudge. To stake at all. Um, <laughs> and then uh, a very suspicious. Uh, clearly not a dog waiter comes walking out. Yeah, it's totally not a dog. It's clearly not a CGI dog who licks no. the water to to film her. It's Grandma do. Exactly. And ev- eventually Shaggy drags him and the dog under the table uh, and tells him off, which leads to Scooby biting him, where Velma yeah. then finds out that obviously Scooby's here and Shaggy's now got a gemstone which just fell out of his pocket. And again, she, it causes her to leave. She goes all golem-like, like, my princess. Hint, <laughs> hint, nudge, nudge. Totally not because she's a witch. It's totally <laughs> not that. Uh, we haven't already seen the moonstones on the staff in the flashback already. Yes. Just saying, we haven't, totally haven't. Anywho, uh, Shaggy blames Skibby for this. Uh, date going very badly, and they end up brawling in a very cartoonish uh, manner. Skibby's fault for it. They have that whole brawl where obviously the, the smoke covers them eventually, and it cuts them back to Fred and Daphne, who, as I said, went to yep. check out a boat, which is a cloak. Shaggy dubbed the SS Daphne because it was purple. Okay. Uh, well, that's such a... And again, obvious. tensions rise uh, between them, arguing while going to the boat. But again, monster arrives, but misses the grab on Daphne. <laughs> as the always classic sort of. Uh, Intro to start with the monster always missing the grab. Uh, and they end up finding the bit in the bottom of the boat where they find loads of new secrets and clues. Yeah. Uh, like the fact that magic staff is what the monster wants. Yeah. Because the, the original fact, um... witch 
had it. And, and, and Thanksgiving was created on that day. Yep. <laughs> and um, the original witch has descended in town. Yep. And... But eventually the room is actually flooded because the monster locks them in. Yep. And they all start flooding. It's, oh no, we're going to die. I don't and know. Then don't the yeah, we're breaking up. Oh no! Look, look what I just did! I smashed the window. I saved our lives. I was still yeah, we're still up. broken yeah. up. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you just can tell, Daphne and Fred are broken up. Yeah, that made it quite obvious when they were saying it, but yeah, yeah. And back with Shaggy and Scooby, another duo broken up at this point. You see Scooby angry painting a line down the centre of the room, <laughs> and then going up onto the ceiling with said line. Which again, like, if I'm glad it was Scooby doing the line because if that was Shaggy, he's climbing up the. F- well, I don't think they'd have done that. I think if it's just Shaggy, it would just be straight across the middle of the room. Yeah, but Shaggy's not that. Would I say pathetic to draw a line in the middle of the room? He's not. But he's not the one that's angry, basically. Yeah, basically, he's annoyed at Scooby, but he's not annoyed enough to draw a line in the room. But anyway, uh, Fred and Daphne return. Real, uh, they're broken up. Shaggy's like, I didn't mean that. I meant why you're wet. Where they obviously reveal there's a uh, clue. Uh, yeah. And when Daphne's like reading the phone book, or was it phone book? He's like, hey, so like a brochure or something. Yeah, like, oh, Shaggy spots a clue on it. Like a winky dink. No, the name of the you... store from earlier on is obviously the witch's name really backwards. Important. Uh, good job Shaggy but you know this moment's uh, ruined when Scooby popped his head down this, uh, from above saying oh, you're no, on my yeah. side of the room which you know it's quite funny you know poor Shaggy he's just had this really cool moment he's like yes I've got this i found a clue and then Scooby's like oh yeah get off. you're on my side get lost get off my land boy and then next they will drive up to the uh, the house. They're driving up with these little signs saying "Do not enter." That means you got like, you in big trouble, you little bitch. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. To save me, the, now talking about the scene again, since it's the opening scene now, uh, yeah. it starts slightly <laughs> extended, a bit more at the start, but nothing important. Yeah, yeah it goes on, goes on. Chase scene where yeah, it goes on. They go through different rooms, they all appeal in different rooms. And then there's a bit where Shaggy meets Shaggy, and it, I couldn't. It was so hard to continue after that bit, as well. I just, it doesn't work when it's not Scooby. Wait, which bit you're on the rest? There's a bit. You go know the chase scenes when they're chasing each other. They're all chasing the villain. The classic scenes where in the cartoons where they would like go through one room and peer through another. And, like cameras down the hallway. There is a scene where two Shaggies come out. I hope I've not been fully concentrating. I think at that point I wasn't fully concentrating. I was like, oh, I've seen this scene already. I'll look away. Literally, two shakers came out and I was like, I want to die because he was just too much for me at then at that point. I literally can't remember that scene. Uh, You're lucky. Any- anyway, uh, the moment you've been waiting for, the villain's revealed to be Velma. No, no, oh it was not God, hinted at already. Oh, who would have thunk it? It's not as if we've hinted at it. The movie clearly hinted at it. It's not it like was clearly figured obvious. Out from the fucking intro of the film. <laughs> Straight away. So anyway, uh, Velma kicks Fred's ass. Freaks out Shaggy and Scooby before using the staff to end the scene. But not no. the movie. Not, uh, she could have killed them straight then. Didn't. Yeah, so the gang then wake up the next morning, still hurting, until the old lady from the store appears. And tells them that Thelma has been possessed by the old witch. Which... She's possessed by my ancestor. Jagger responds with his first his first girlfriend is a witch, which Fred follows with the same line of, uh, you know, I know, I know, I know, you, I know you, yeah. That's I know. Jeez, <laughs> Fred, she's standing right behind you. She's like, you fucking what? <laughs> uh. After they've spoken to the old lady, figured out uh, what they need to go is into the cave. They're like, okay, we need to go through the water to get there. So the old lady's like, oh, I've got scuba equipment I can uh, uh, lend you. A good it. price. <laughs> and then, you know, it cuts to them swimming 
And this scene, I'm just going to say this right now, I think you may agree, is 20 times better than the underwater scenes from Jaws 3D. Um, if it didn't have scuba, yeah. Would you rather see C- Joe Scooby swimming or a very fucking still shark just slowly moving to the camera? Neither. I'd rather see Scooby. I'd rather watch individual two Scooby films. <laughs> this scene is straight up 20 times better than any on the water scene in Jaws 3D. Yeah, but like, zero times 20 is still zero. Just saying. Basic maths. But it's still better than that. <laughs> If you want to see an underwater scene, watch that. Don't fucking watch that. <laughs> if you want to see an underwater scene, watch a better film. There is that. But I mean, if you're watching this film, or that film, you'd watch this one for the not shoddy 3D effects. I'd only watch this film again if I was blind. So I didn't have to watch it. And I'll just not hear it either. I'll just put the earphones out. And then just imagine a better film. Just imagine Dory Explorer. What I'll do. Right. So, Elliot, in the cave, uh, the gang watch Velma make more lake monsters, which still look better than Scooby. They still don't look great, but still look better than Scooby. Uh, not, as, not, not that great. Which great, but still. Better. Check comes up with a plan this time, which is to call out Velma, make the monsters chase them. Turns out it's... Yeah. Uh, I mean, Fred, Daphne, and Scooby got chased because Shaggy stuck around. Continues his weird uh, way of trying to get into her head. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sings really badly. Yeah. And he tries to get tweaked to her and she, she sort of makes it look like she's torn out and then he's like, it's like aha! No! Got bitch. you! And then obviously, Scooby, Scooby, Scooby goes loony. Yeah. yeah. Scooby literally paints this is my favourite scene. Goes through it, and then the frogs all just like bash into it. Okay. This is literally Scooby my favourite scene. Works. Yeah, because this is something Scooby would actually do. Yeah. He literally would probably come up with a paint, paint a doorway, put wet paint on and run through it, and then control accurate. the monsters. It's very Looney Tune. It was literally yeah. like he was a member of that group. And very this, accurate, is, this is probably my my favourite scene in the movie. Yeah, but if. Daphne and Fred went with him, then he would have gone and killed me. I wouldn't have done it. I, 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 did, I, I knew they wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have done that. Cause it, yeah. you know, they're not, they're, sure they're not they're CGI, really so uh, they can't go through it. But the person in the cartoons... No, uh, sh- no, it's Shaggy, but he flew. No, he did that in the cartoons, though. Huh? And duplicated himself. He, in the, uh, he sort of possibly did that in the cartoons. So don't quote me. Um... No. Anyway, uh, back with Shaggy, he sings obviously the Silver Moon song, which eventually snaps Velma out of the possession. And the ghost is now out in the open, allowing Scooby to break the staff and cause her to say the classic vi- villain line of, I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling kids and the fucking dog. You fat fucking dog. And uh, uh, this vanquishes the ghost. The light monsters become frogs, just as the, they uh About to kill Daphne and Fred. <laughs> yeah. And. Well, Velma showing a little smooch, which yeah. ends up with them going, and Oh, like, yeah. let's just be friends. Good. Well, they're both like it, aren't they? They're both like, Yeah, let's just be friends. Which she obviously pleases Scooby, he's like, Yes. And once they uh, all return to work, they get a big, massive check. And they're yeah. like, He's like, Oh, maybe I should uh, get you hooked up with uh, some like, lawyers and stuff just in case. Making, case, cor- making, making incorporated, and then Daphne's like, "Oh, it's quite a mystery." Yeah, it's quite a mystery incorporated. And Scooby's, and they're all like, "Yeah, it's all group huddle," and leave Scooby out of it. Yeah, and he just that thing he like, walks oh, away, runs it. onto a, a slippy floor, lands on a floor buffer, spins himself out the window, and he's yeah. caught by Shaggy. Which... And now Shaggy and Scooby got a fuck, <sighs> which leads to a very hippie end dance number, which, which I half like. Since you, you get to see a few classic it. moments from the cart like monsters from the cartoons, even if they are clearly fake, this it's still classic monsters like uh Mamba Wamba. Yeah, but, but I didn't like the musical in the, the, rack, the I didn't like the music the in the background. We're not we're not get we're not getting to that yet. Hold on, just wait because uh, no, 
You have the. I don't want to continue 80s... talking about this fucking song. You have the eighties no. dance disco number as well, which isn't any to. better. Stop making me. And as you number. said, you then have the weird rap where they're all dressed in the comic a- uh, comic a- the cartoon accurate outfits, and also, yet uh, <sighs> Velma's dressed like Daphne. Daphne's like Velma, and then Shaggy's wearing a Scooby outfit, and Scooby's dressed like Shaggy. The oh, only one who is you, Fred. <laughs> but Fred isn't even Fred anyway. He's saying Fred is dressed as Fred, dressing as Fred. It's exactly. Weird. It's a weird ending, and even though they did it for the last one, I would have loved if they just did the What's in Scooby Doo theme again and just changed it with like different monsters yeah. or something. Or they could have done the original one or something. Literally, I as soon as it ended, I left the uh, DVD on for a bit because the background and uh, music for the DVD menu was What's in Scooby Doo, and I just left it playing. I was like, drain out. Drain out, drain out. And all the thoughts of what they could have done for the actual ending. I do, I'm, not as lucky, I'm not as lucky as you because technically I watched this film just not long So, yeah. So this is probably why I'm very like, kill me. It's because I've not long watched it. So it's hey, you watched it today? Me. Yes. Oh, it's I still affecting me. I wanted to like, leave it to as last minute as possible because I... I didn't want to watch it at all. I, I just had some time last night to spare. I was like, I'll watch it out of the way there. Mm, I, I watched it there. Uh, just... Watched a not that not much time. better movie of a Terminator Genesis, which is it's bad, but it's still a bit more watchable than this. But anyway, um, I think it's time for the overalls. I think we spoke good enough. Yeah. Uh, so for me, this movie is very similar to the first one. I like this one for the fact that I'd rather see monsters and ghosts and the fact the gang is already together so you know there's no build up yeah because there's a lot of throwbacks to the animation like the uh, sky scene the van uh, Velma being a villain like in the mummy movie but I prefer the first one at time because you had the better end credit dance number so for me I'm happy the cast returned I enjoyed the humour at times and the story so, once again, it's, it's a five for me, but it was let down at the end by the shoddy end musical number, so it's just b- below the m- <sighs> mystery begins for me. Yeah, for me, uh, overall, the film was cringy. It just felt wrong, and it was so hard to watch. But I think it's something kids could definitely sit down and watch and just deal with it. But it's our point. It's not meant I'm to be for us. I'm not a kid, <laughs> and that was the beauty of the original two Scooby Doo films. Is like, even though they were kids' films, it was done in a way where even adults could fucking love it. Yeah, because like, the difference that they were designed for cinema. This was designed for Cartoon Network. Yeah, big know, difference there. But still, still, it's not an excuse. It's dog shit film. It's a four out of ten because a kid would like it. So it's good enough for a kid film, but. Not enough for me. Just saying. So that yeah, gives, four out of ten. That gives it a Chatter Cave overall rating of four point five, which places it in eighth between the Mission mm. Begins and Jaws Three D. Mm. So my well, before I say my question is that I just want to say literally this. We've now ha- watched 10 movies. We now have an actual top 10 list. Oh. Ooh. We officially have a top 10 list now. Oh. Which I'll give a quick run through, even though I did it a few videos ago. So, Jaws is top of our top 10 list at the moment, followed by Scooby Doo 2. Followed by Scooby Doo 3. Uh, Scooby Doo 3. Scooby Doo 2002, which is in third. I read, I read that the wrong way around. I read the three first. And I was like, oh, Scooby Doo 3. Wait. This is three was mystery begins. <laughs> um, you can't see, you can't see, but I'm saluting at these films. Uh, number four was Bait 3D. Uh, yep. That's uh, five was Step Brothers. Yeah, that's a good one. Six was Jaws Two. And then it goes downhill. Uh, seven was Scooby and the Mystery Begins. Uh, eight was obviously Scooby and the Curse of Light Monster we just watched. Nine was Jaws 3D. And bottom of our list is Jaws of Revenge, which come next week we'll be saying goodbye to. Thank God. Hopefully, what we need to do is find five really good films 
those well, last five. Uh, what I will say is the entire thing. All, all four movies, I'm pretty certain we're going to rate higher than the, the, uh, the bottom few. Good. So Good. I, think, I think by the end of August, I'll be gone. But anyway, um, Good. my question of the day, which I pointed out last week, is yeah. what's your least favourite animated Scooby-Doo movie? No. Since you can't officially answer this question, I'll have to be the only answer for this one. Yes. As my worst uh, Scooby-Doo movie is Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island. Since my favourite is Zombie Island, to see them go, oh yeah, we're going to go back there. And I was so excited to see them go back there to then just be kicked in the bollocks when I actually saw that movie. And I was like, this movie's so bad. They could have captured the exact same feeling of the first one, the horror sense of it but they went so childish and just the plot in general was just so shoddy. It just pissed me off to the limit. So that is the worst one. I don't know what the fuck you're doing there. Um, I was just uh, writing my... That 13 Ghost is not a fake. It's not a movie. No, it's just basically me writing... Uh, I wish I was watching these original two Scooby Doo films. Just saying. Anyway, uh, join us next week as we finally leave Poolville and enter a world of monsters. As we start the first of three entries in the Warner Brothers legendary monster verse, as we discuss Godzilla. Shrek. No, Godzilla. Oh, Godzilla. Okay. Until then, I've been your host, Drunk King Thomas Hughes. And I am going to go back and watch Scooby Doo Monsters Unleashed. And this has Bye. been Cheddar Cave. Rock roll. I've run out of jokes. Yeah. This is why I try to say bye before you can do that shit joke. I've run out of them this time. That's why I just said rock roll. This time you've run out of them on the first fucking film. I know. I've ever watched. I just I spent ages trying to think of a joke and this sort of Scooby quote and was like, "That'll do. I'll make a joke that I've never run out of jokes." So essentially, I just made a very crappy joke, more than crappy than usual. You disappoint me. I disappoint myself. Now you know how your parents feel. Hush, but very true. <laughs> so, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>